Hello. This is nice. We have some uh, Indians and then we have people from all over and old friends and um, old, fr old students from India and also new ones. So, because it's Sunday, it's always a little um, lazy and everybody likes to come in at that time and usually um, view the recording, yeah? So I'm not going to waste more time. Um, people can join in as they want. I'm going to start off with today's topic. It's 8 p.m., huh, Mary, in Colorado? Okay, so you're all in on Saturday evening, and we are into Sunday morning. So, yeah, but it's still a weekend for everyone, huh? Okay, good. <clears throat> you know, today's event, uh, no, I'm sorry, today's topic for the webinar is also very much a weekend uh, mood kind of a topic. Good morning from Pune. Good morning, Vinita. Um, it's a very, very weekend topic, meaning the feeling that a noble gas often gives you, yeah, or the feeling that a noble gas has within themselves is also a very, very weekend feeling. What do I mean by that? I mean that you don't often see these cases, noble gases in your practice will be statistically uh, so let me put it like this. Statistically, you will find few cases of noble gases uh, as compared to other mineral, plant, or animal cases. However, it's not that you won't get them. And these are the ones when you get them, you really enjoy the case taking as well. Uh, they bring a completely different energy into the clinic. And when they are treated, they can really give back or contribute a lot to the society. Um, you know, noble gases, let's look at it how they are in nature and therefore how they are as humans. In nature, noble gases are very rare, okay? So they are not in abundance as the other minerals. That's one. And even when they are, it's not very easy to find them. Yeah? It's not, it, uh, it took quite a while for them to be discovered. So that is why I mentioned that you may not have a plethora of noble gas cases. For example, when I look at my other mineral cases and plant and animal cases, I hardly have, say, two to three cases of each noble gas yeah, over the years. So hardly about 15 to 20 cases in total yeah, over so many years of practice. And I think it was in 2004 that I came across my first noble gas as a constitutional remedy and the way I understood it or the way Sachindra and I understood it, the way we understood it in our practice. Um, so that is the rarity, yes. Also, it was not very difficult, it was not very easy to find these noble gases or this case. So it took us a quite a long time to understand the patient then to come to the fact that she needs a mineral remedy and then to understand which mineral remedy is it because we don't understand what is the problem of completion and where is the issue and what is the capacity or uh, where is she in her, um, uh, where is she or how does she see her capacity, where is she on the graph of her capacity. And so it took quite a while to understand what I needed to give her till I finally found out a noble gas. So now this was the, this is the first thing that they are rare 
and that they are um, not so easy to track. Okay, this is one of the most important features of noble gases. Now, the next important thing, or let's say the core of a noble gas case. What is the core of a noble gas case? When you look at a noble gas, we all know, when you look at the periodic table, you know that the periodic table has elements that are put on that grid based on their atomic numbers and there are about 18 columns on the periodic table and as you go from the first to the 18th column they are nearing and nearing and nearing the completion of their shells or they are getting closer and closer to completion or to stability of their structure. But it is only in the 18th column that they are, com that they are finally complete. Yeah? And that their entire structure is complete, the electronic configuration is complete, and they do not have any other, um, they do not have the desire or do not have the need to enter into chemical reactions or to struggle for completion. Now this is very important that there is no struggle for completion and therefore there is no struggle to there is no struggle in relationships there is no struggle to hold on to something there is no struggle to uh, to show or to prove yourself yeah this struggle the noble gas does not have because they are complete by themselves. Now, therefore in nature, they don't enter into chemical reactions, yeah, despite the fact that they are very, very heavy, yeah, because as you go down the periodic table, now we have uh, six noble gases, helium in the first row, neon, which is the noble gas of the second row, argon, which is the noble gas of the third row, uh, krypton of the fourth, xenon of the fifth, and radon of the sixth. Yeah, and there could be another noble gas, which um, there is still a research going on. Okay, so we have six noble gases at the moment whose properties that we very clearly know about. And if you look at the fourth, fifth, and the sixth rows, then the noble gases are very heavy. I mean heavy in their atomic weight and atomic number. Yeah, when you look at argon, krypton, xenon, and then finally radon, yeah, which is from the sixth row, and we know elements of the sixth row are very heavy. However, having said that, they are very, very light. They are gases. Yeah, so there is, there is, there is not that heaviness of the structure. Despite the fact that they could be so lower down in the row, all the noble gases are gases. When they, do, they don't have this holding on, they don't have this heaviness, and they don't have this structure. Uh, they have structure, but they do not have the ego of the structure. Okay? And that is why they are light and they are gases. What are gases? Gases easily adapt to any volume easily adapt into any container, easily spread into any space, yes? So there is an ease that comes in the physical uh, matter or the physical state of matter of a gas, okay? So we said they are rare. They are not heavy as in their 
capacity holding an ego. Um, we said they are a little difficult to understand or to catch, to nab in the clinic. Okay. There is no struggle. Okay. Now, this is from the gases. We'll now convert it all into human language. So don't worry. Okay. There's no struggle for them to complete because they are already complete and they do not enter into a chemical reaction. It takes a special condition. It takes either very high pressure or it takes very low temperatures or it takes an extremely restless gas like fluorine. We know that fluorine or all halogens are extremely reactive and fluorine is the most reactive in the entire periodic table. So it takes something restless, something active, some sub-zero temperatures. It takes a lot of pushing. It takes a lot of effort to get these noble gases to react to other elements. So this non-reactivity is also a very, very important part of noble gases and of people needing noble gases. Okay. Um, okay. Now I'm going to translate this all into human language. The core for a noble gas patient or the the driving force in his life or the deepest innermost pattern of a noble gas is that of giving up, is that of letting go. It is one where the person feels that once he has achieved something, once he has obtained what he wants, once he has certain goals, because we are all human beings, yeah, and we do have goals, and we do have targets, and we do have desires. So the noble gas human feels that, yes, I have a target, yes, I have a goal to achieve, Yes, I have a direction that I have to take in life. And yes, I must be capable to a certain point. But once I have achieved that capacity, once I have proved to myself that I can do it, which is completion, then I am not going to hold on to it materially, materialistically. So these are people who will say, once I give up, uh, once I uh, get what I want, I don't have any attachment to it. I detach. Yeah. For example, we had a Krypton woman who said that now Krypton is a noble gas of the fourth row. And we have in our earlier lectures, in earlier seminars, and in our books, explained time and again, that in the fourth row, the most important aspect is the aspect of completing one's task and finding a secure structure, finding a strict, secure position and creating an absolutely, uh, what, what would you say? Um, in not indestructible, but a safe structure which will not be um, vulnerable to attack. So it is working and constantly working towards protection. Yeah, this is the theme of the fourth room. Okay, so they are always either involved in work very seriously, involved in their task and duty, or and they are also trying to, with this task and duty, build enough finances, enough security so that they have their protection. Okay. So now this Krypton woman said to us that 
once I need a, once I finish a, um, my life had several jobs, she said. And she said her father died very early on in life. And she became the father of the family. She took up her response. She took it up as her responsibility to save her family, to get her younger sisters married, to get her brother to get a good education and job. Yes. And she sacrificed her whole life for this entire family. And she said, I finished the job. One thing is done. And once this is done, let's say my daughter, my sisters got educated. This is one circle finished. And she says, then I detach from the circle, from this loop. And she said, then comes the next. And I say, once this finishes, I will detach from it. So every task in her life, and she says, my family loves me. But I somehow do not have the attachment for the family. And she is doing the most. She is doing the most for such swamps. She is doing the most for her family. She is uh, the, the world thinks that she loves her family. But she says this is not true. She says it's not that I don't have feelings. I do have feelings, which is why I'm doing for the family. But somehow I feel it is only my job to provide this. And once I have provided this, then I detach. So she says, my sister got educated. That was one job ticked off the list. Then she got married. That was the other job ticked off the list. And she says, now my sister's gone away. She's married and gone away. And I do talk to her. And she keeps talking to me. And she wants advice and things. But she says, I'm not emotionally attached because that is one thing off my list. Then she does that with her brother. She does that with the whole family. And she says, you know, I'm still in this loop where I'm finishing several other tasks. But she said, you know, doctor, once I finish all these tasks, that will be then my life. And I said, what will that life be? And she says, well, in that life, I will not have any attachments. And she says, at the moment also, I don't have, but I must, I mean, I don't, I don't feel so emotionally attached, but I am doing things for them. But there will be a time when I will have finished all of this and I will be able to give up. And she says, that's the real me. Yeah. And that was a woman who did well on Krypton. Yeah. So. It's not that they are detached in a way they don't do things. In fact, they are, I feel, in fact, most of the noble gases that I have seen as cases are people who have contributed a lot to the society or people who have contributed a lot to their family. There is a radon case. Radon is the noble gas of the sixth row. And this is a woman who is extremely powerful. It's also a woman. A woman who is extremely, you know, like once she comes into the room and she's leading um, a pharmaceutical industry. Now, isn't that very interesting that she's leading an allopathic pharmaceutical industry? And um, she, you know, even when she enters the room, everybody, the whole boardroom stands up. And she says, I don't know why. Because I've never shown or thrown that power across. You know, I've never, sh th you know, she says, I don't throw my weight across. I don't throw my weight across to people. And yet she says, when I enter into the boardroom, they will all stand up, you know. So they have a capacity and she manages beautifully and she handles the whole industry very well. And she does her work her, when she's, of course, extremely good at delegating the work and getting her work done and all of that. And yet she says, this is not my ultimate goal. She says, I always wanted to reach to this point because my father expected a lot out of me. And my father always thought I would uh, really excel in life. And this is where I am. But she says, I don't have an attachment to the seat. And she says, once I have, you know, once the industry, once the company is at a position where, you know, I can give it to someone 
who can handle it then she says then i will go on my path and so i said why then why don't you go on your path now and she says no i am here on this earth to complete something yeah i am here to complete my responsibility i'm here to fulfill the expectations of my father and i think because he instilled it so much into me i think it's also very important for me to have reached this position and now that i'm in this position it's very important for me to see that the whole company is at a very stable point and that even after i leave they are not going to have any difficulties but my goal is to finish this up and leave so what i'm trying to show you with these two cases is the deepest pattern is complete and detach because a noble gas in nature complete is complete and therefore detached it does not enter into chemical reactions there is no struggle so that was the second word if you remember i had said there is no struggle it's not that there is no struggle in their lives if there wouldn't have been struggle in their lives they wouldn't have even come to you as patients this would have been states of nirvana but they do come to you in your clinic it is that yes they struggle through life because we are all human beings and we go through everyday struggles we go through everyday uh, struggles of deadlines and family and relationships and uh, paying the bills and you know simple things like that but a noble gas does not look at this as their ultimate struggle and conflict a noble gas patient always says i am in the circle of life because i do have to complete something as a human being but once i complete this circle once i complete whatever it is that i have as my goal then i give up this circle i give up this desire to struggle so their ultimate goal, goal is to give up the struggle or to be detached from the struggle you see that now i had another patient who was actually struggling a lot in fact that was the first case through which suchindra and i actually figured out what a noble gas would look like and how would a noble gas talk in everyday life and she was somebody who was struggling relentlessly she was somebody who looked so exhausted not i wouldn't say struggling relentlessly but who had come at a point where she looked so exhausted that it looked like she had struggled intensely just before this complete breakdown and she was completely collapsed and broken down but her her point was that she was at the end of this is how she saw it that she was almost at the end of her life coming close to a not end but coming close to a point of completion like a certain things would have been completed by now and then she would have been able to give up but that those things were not complete till that point now she kept saying that i had i knew that by uh, by middle age or by menopause you have completed your task as a mother you have you have been a mother you've left your identity on this earth you've uh, you know raised your children and then it's time for you to now you know take a back seat you know give up the struggle of um uh looking for who you are and get engaged into something else but this has not happened in my life and that is why she had the breakdown so here we had a noble gas case of the third row where her feeling was i should have completed my identity as a mother i should have completed my, she she always wanted recognition and recognition for her personality for who she was and she said that for me would have come from bearing a child because a child gives you an identity this was the way she looked at life and at menopause she realized she has not had a child so she has lost that um 
she has lost that um, that chance to to uh, to make an imprint to be noticed to make an identity and now it's already time for her at 60 to detach and give up so you see for her also the thing was make your identity and then detach you understand so this you must remember is the red line the keynote the basic pattern of a noble gas complete something finish your struggle mm, complete the loop complete the uh, target that you have in your mind but once you complete you want to detach from it you want to detach from the struggles you want to detach from the hassles and you want to go on another path and that could be spirituality that could be you know um, astrology I have also seen that they indulge in a lot of these kind of things literature spirituality um, astrology astronomy because these are things that once all the material things have been achieved they want they get attracted to yeah so another important thing is you could have a noble gas <clears throat> You could have a noble gas who has either completed and is detached. And that those are people who will say, this was my job, this was completed, this was why I am on this earth, this was my purpose. Their purpose is completed and once that is completed, I feel complete detachment. Or you could have people who will say, I am in the process of completing. But my goal is, once this purpose is fulfilled, once this circle or this loop is complete, I will detach. Or you could have people who say, the loop did not complete and therefore I haven't got the chance to detach. You see that? But these are all different presentations of that same basic core pattern complete and detach I hope you use clearly okay now these three beyond these three presentations of the deep pattern there could be one more presentation which I have seen specifically in my xenon cases in my xenon cases I have seen that now xenon is the noble gas of the fifth row yeah you are, we have to also understand that noble gases are at the end of one row and beyond the noble gas begins the next row so they are somehow in a transition between ends and beginnings yeah also if you look at them once they end their purpose they begin detachment and they begin the journey of spirituality so it's ends and beginnings and in my xenon cases i have often seen them say that this was a purpose which was extremely important it was a purpose of research it was a purpose of doing something for mankind and it is always doing something in xenon which is the fifth row noble gas it is always doing something for mankind or researching something or finding a green revolution or an ecological movement or a, you know they want to do some research to be able to save mankind this is a xenon state and once they have done it or they only want to do this they do not want to take up leadership which is the next row so it's the end of the fifth row and the beginning of the sixth row so they don't want to take up leadership which is sixth row they don't want to start a new row they don't want to take up something which is more uh, powerful yeah or which involves more responsibility they do not want to start anything like that they only want to find 
for research, which is more the fifth row, and stop at that point. So you could also have a presentation of a noble gas where once I end something, I want to detach and I do not want to start something new. I hope you understand this fourth presentation as well. Okay, now, so the first thing I told you, the first most important thing we have now covered in a noble gas human being is completion and then giving up. Now, I use the word detachment, but there are many other words that are synonymous or that your patient can use for the word detachment. And they could say, I feel like giving up, letting go, um, withdrawing. Yeah? Um, they often uh, giving up, letting go, withdrawing. Them and the others, you know, them and the others. Like, this is me. And I don't feel so attached to the others, them and the others. Now, detachment. Let's come to the second most important feature of a noble gas, which must be present in every noble gas case. Yeah, it cannot not be there. If you have a noble gas, this feature has to be there. And that is the detachment. Yeah, noble gases we know, as I just told you in nature, do not react. Yeah, they are. That is why we call them noble, or the other word for them is inert. Hmm? So they are inert. They do not. Uh, they do not get into reactions, and that is the whole detachment. Now, when you look at detachment in a noble gas human being, one which came up in the case itself, or not in the case, in the um, in the main pattern, that is, I give up and let go once my job is done. But the other is, they actually find it very, very difficult to connect to people. And, or they want to connect to people. Or, when they fall sick, there might be people who have connected well and done things, but the moment they fall sick, this could be one of the most important fe features, is that now they can't connect to people. Yeah. Now, when I say they can't connect, meaning sometimes they could say this as a problem and sometimes this might not be a problem. Okay, it's not always that it is a problem. Sometimes it's, it's just that they are like this and they are happy with it. And sometimes they want to connect and they are not happy with it. But the fact is that the that they cannot connect is one of the important themes. Now. We had a xenon case where the girl, as I told you, they could either have a fear or they could have a fact that they don't connect and they could either be uncomfortable with it or they could be very comfortable with it. But there is some kind of a disconnect from the world. And I was telling you the xenon girl, her mother, oh, in fact, for her, this was not a problem at all. But her mother uh, told me as the child, she was a 16-year-old girl, and she was brilliant at studies and um, this was the one I was telling you who wanted to be a research scientist and do something for the world but she said I am not somebody who will connect to anyone so I cannot take up a job of a good doctor or a leader where you change the world I would rather be in my own cocoon and save the world from that cocoon you know and she often also used the word this is a safe haven. My home is my cocoon and a safe haven. So this is one of the also one of the features of the detachment. They can often say, I'm very happy in my space. I stay in the space. Yeah. Um, I, I stay in my room. But I don't, don't need and connect them from a distance you know like I'm here and uh, I can see others and I can see what's happening but I don't need to really go there and be part of that active conversation and be part of this group so there is some kind of a difficulty that they have or there is some kind of a I wouldn't say that it's always a difficulty they they might just not want to connect 
you know, and they are very happy in that phase. Now, the 16-year-old girl, her mother told me, doctor, I don't know because she doesn't tell me so much. And most of the time, she's in a room and though she's a brilliant student and her teacher likes her and she communicates everything that is needed. But beyond that necessary communication, I don't see her communicating so much. And when I gave her the remedy, it's interesting that she did open up and start communicating much more. Yeah. But at the same time, I told her mother that this is part of her personality and it's not going to completely change. She is going to keep some things to herself. She is going to, you know, have her own privacy and you may not necessarily find that she is as talkative and as attached to you as your younger daughter because a younger daughter was not a noble gas case in fact the younger daughter was a mammal case yeah so she, the younger daughter was a mammal who is you know way out with communicating always wants to hug the mother and all of this and the older daughter is a xenon case who stays in a room communicates but only when necessary yeah so they have this thing the, the uh, noble gas patients but remember one thing they don't um they don't not so let me put it like this they do their duty they do their work they do communicate when it's needed and they do fulfill their purpose in life yeah so they are not fearful or shying away and that is why they are detaching no in fact noble gases are complete in their structure so human beings needing noble gases are actually people who are very, very strong and purposeful. People who complete whatever they have taken. People who do not shy away from the struggles of life. But they are just people who feel so much of attachment is not necessary. Yeah, so it's also in a way healthy. So they could do, for example, the Krypton woman who was doing so much for her family, but she said, this severe attachments where you feel sorry and you know your your parent dies and your family suffers i don't need to feel so much of attachment you can have your space and but you can still do a lot for them yeah so you must remember that noble gas cases though they may have a kind of a detachment or they can have a kind of a you know um some of my patients have actually used the word barrier that there is a barrier between me and the world. But of course, in those cases where they have used the word barrier, they have felt pathologically disconnected. And after the remedy, the feeling of the barrier has improved. And they have actually managed to connect and managed to uh, be part of groups and things. But at the same time, what I do want to say is there is these words that come up in a noble gas case a feeling of a barrier, a feeling that you are in a womb, not necessarily always a womb, but you are in some kind of a space. Yeah, some cases use the word womb, but some cases say you are in your own space. You are in your own bubble. Yeah, there is another uh, word that often my noble gas patients have used, and that is void, V-O-I-D. Yeah, and they say, I am in a void. Or they say, at the end of all this, you know, they are very spiritual and they are also very, uh, they are people who are always looking for what is beyond material possessions. So they always tell me, what is after this? When you complete, what is after this? Then it's a void. You know, so therefore they get attracted to spirituality and to things like once your material purpose is achieved, you need to do something more. And you need to do something which is not material because otherwise you feel a void. So they often use this word void. So this, these are the words that come with the detachment, void, barrier, bubble, cocoon, need my space, my privacy. Yes. Another important thing. So these are two things with the noble gases. Another very important thing with the noble gas is the feeling of uh, not the feeling, the impression of windows. They love windows. And I've seen this. It also came up in the proving of neon 
I think Jeremy Sher has proved me on and I was looking through the provings after all my cases. I was trying to see where do these fit in because in my cases we had given these remedies based on our understanding of noble gases that we had developed. So then when I saw some of the proving symptoms I wanted to check and cross check what came up in the proving. And it was interesting that what comes up in the proving of noble gases is or in the proving of neon is a feeling of windows like people were sitting inside a room and looking through a window yeah now what is a window a window is a connection between one and the other yeah so window is also that you sit inside but you look out so it's really I think the window fits beautifully into this theory of the ends and beginnings which is very important to noble gas and it also fits into this detachment where you can see but you don't need to physically connect and attach okay so windows then I also told you that astrology astronomy um, past life regression meditation these are things that these people are very very strongly affiliated to because these are things that give them a connection to what is beyond material. Now remember one thing, the noble gases, they are minerals. So there is definitely an issue of completion. There is definitely an issue of purpose. There is definitely an issue of capacity. There is definitely an issue of I have a purpose in life that I have to fulfill. This is a mineral theme. I have a purpose that I have to fulfill. I am here for a purpose. Okay, noble gas is a mineral, so the purpose is definitely there. But the thing is, once the purpose is achieved, I need to escape. I need to become inert. I need to go into spirituality. I need to withdraw. I need to give up. I need to let go. Yeah? So this is where you will differentiate the noble gas from you know, drug remedies or you will differentiate them from imponderable remedies. Yeah, with some of you we have also done imponderables during our seminars and uh, you know also in our books yeah we've written about imponderables or webinars or things. Imponderable remedies are energy remedies. They do not have any matter. Drug remedies are lost. Noble gas remedies are neither they have matter because they are material, they are, they are uh, elements and they are not lost. They have a purpose. But once they finish their purpose, they want to give it up. And that is also the difference between the 18th column and the 10th column. Now just to put that little bit here. In the 10th column, when you have elements like nicolum, palladium, platina, silica, yeah, the middle of the periodic table. I'm talking of the central column of the periodic table. So Chandra and I like to call it as the central column because that's the more in between. Yeah. Now in this column, people have also achieved. People also feel they've completed what they want and they have reached that position what they want. But they don't give it up. They hold on because they are still incomplete. Platina is incomplete. So is palladium. So is nickelium. So is carbon and so is silica, silicon. Yeah. So elements in the tenth column are powerful elements, elements who feel they have completed their task or not completed, they feel they are at the peak of their task, at the peak of their power and at the peak of their success. But they are not going to give up that success, they are going to hold on to it. But by the 18th column, they don't say we are holding on, we have achieved, they say we have completed. And when you complete, you can't hold on, you only have to give up. You see that? That is the difference. Um, okay, so I told you about the main um, pattern and I told you about things around it. Yeah. Um, now, just before I tell you about each individual, do you want me to show these slides? Okay, okay, good. So um, I think those will anyways be loaded in the recording so you can see them later. Now, um, there was one very important point that I was thinking about and 
I thought I had missed it as I was talking to you about all the noble gases. Okay. Um, in all of them, the way, so how do you decide which noble gas to give? Yeah, because they all have the completion, they all have the spirituality, they all have the uh, withdrawing and the void. Yeah, the way you decide on which noble gas to give is by trying to see the whole story of the patient and what is it that they are trying to achieve or complete in their life. For example, in my radon woman, what she was trying to achieve was a very high power. What she was trying to achieve was um, the feeling that she is uh, at a position where she owns the entire company. What she was trying to achieve was, a, uh, not achieve, but complete would be a better word. Of course, they achieve, but they complete that task. So she was trying to complete her, um, her desire of being responsible for a whole lot of people, for the entire company. You see, and once she had completed that, she would give up. So that is radon. Whereas for the xenon girl, she was only trying to complete the task hmm, of researching something that will help the world at large. Yeah. So her uh, purpose was of the fifth row, and therefore she needed xenon. For the argon woman, her desire was to find out who she was in life. And once she had found that all, then for her, she wanted to detach from the world. Yeah. So what is their purpose? Find that out and give the remedy. Uh, for the neon, like we had two men who needed neon remedies. And in both of them, their purpose was to really be able to stand on their own two feet and find out that they are completely independent in every way. And once they had found out that they are completely independent in every way, then they were ready to give up. For example, I remember one of the neon guys, he wanted to do paragliding. Yeah, he wanted to do parachute, you know, diving uh, from the airplane with a parachute, then he wanted to do paragliding. Um, he wanted to do everything related to flying. Yeah, but of course, not this free and fast flying, but gliding. So I said, what is the feeling of gliding? And he said, the feeling of gliding is you are neither in the heaven nor on earth. And you are by yourself and you can remain suspended on your own. You do not need the ground for support and you do not you know, you're not even up in the air and, you know, all a gone, lost, gone soul. Uh, this has frozen again. But can you hear me? Then we can continue because we have only three more minutes and I'd rather continue and finish this up. Yeah, give me a feedback. Good, good. So we'll continue. So this is very, very important to the noble gases that, uh, no, to neon or to this man specifically, can they hear me? Can you hear me? So this is very important. This was very important for this noble gas neon patient that he stood independent and suspended by himself. And once he did that, then it was okay for him. And then he could move out. And then he could move out. Yeah. Or give up. Yeah. So this this is uh, this was neon. Now helium. We had a helium patient, yeah, who was about uh, forty-five, and he said that I am. It's very important for me to just know that I am there, to know that I exist, to know that I am somebody on this earth, that I have some structure, you know, it was very, very primitive, his feeling. And he said, otherwise, if I don't feel I am, then I end up getting into this womb-like structure. I end up, I always make this womb around me and I always make this space and this bubble around me. And I 
I have absolutely difficulties in connecting with people because I don't know whether I am or whether I am not. So I said, what does this mean? And he says, I just need to know that I have been on this earth. I just need to know that I have existed. I just need to know that with whatever I have done with all my, um, what would I say, with all my contributions to the society, I want to know that I have existed. So his thing was, I have existed and that is enough for me. Yeah. And he received the remedy helium. So what I'm trying to say is, find out what is the purpose of that person's life. Because each one of us has a purpose. Each one of us has a driving force. And once you know the driving force, that is the row. And completion of that and detachment is the noble gas of that row. So then you have your complete prescription. Okay? Okay. Um, good. I think I have covered the most important, of course, there is a whole lot more, but I have, com I have completed or I have at least tried to address the most important issues in a noble gas. And I've given you the basic core pattern and structure on which you can base your noble gas prescription. Um, of course, most of you would be having my book. Yeah, the first one has this. Yeah, the first one has a whole chapter a whole uh, section on noble gases and now after I have spoken this to you you can go back and read that it has cases of all the different uh, uh, noble gas uh, of each noble gas element so this will be um, you know this should be uh, easy for you to now understand can you describe argon please so in argon I'll tell you the main line is that once I have completed or once I have understood who I am, I have a personality, I have made my mark as an identity, people recognize me. So in Argon, what is very important is people have to recognize their personality because that is the issue of the third row. People have to recognize who they are. And once they have completed who they are in this world, then it's okay for them to leave this world. Yeah. Of course, you can also view the recording again and again to see anything that you have missed out. Um, so it was really good doing this, connecting with all of you. And I hope you get some nice noble gas cases. And do, do share this with us whenever you, whenever you get a case. Do send it. Share this link also. Yeah, so that any friends of yours who wants, want to know about noble gases, can definitely uh, get some information and can get some help. We will put this up on our website very soon, today itself. So, you know, you can start reviewing from maybe a few hours later. Okay. Thank you, guys. Bye, Lorna. Bye, Mitch. Bye, Kerry. Supriya, bye-bye. Priyanka, welcome. Bye-bye, Heidi. Yes, namaste, huh? Mitch, you never forget to say your namaste. <laughs> okay, and all the others, yeah? Everyone whose names I haven't maybe read out. It was fun connecting with you, and we will now meet next month again with a webinar. Of course, just keep uh, looking at the website and the emails. We'll send you the, and we'll put it up on the website. When is the next seminar? When is the next webinar? Bye, guys. Have a great Sunday.